Corinthians chapter number one, verse number 17. Um, whoo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. Young lady right here with the green on, with the gray sweater and the green on right here, just slip your hands up and decree and declare it's happening now. It's happening now. It's happening now. Let, let me tell the rest of y'all something. I may not be talking directly to you, but I'm telling you right now, I might be speaking through you. You hear me? It's, it's, it's happening now. God is able to do just what he said he will do. He's going to perform that very thing that he promised to you. You are desiring something from God that money can't buy. You're desiring something from God that man can't bestow upon you. And God says, I'm getting ready to do the hard things for you. I'm getting ready to do those difficult things for you in the name of Jesus. Now, the reason some of y'all not going to be blessed because you don't know how to get happy for nobody else. My God, he's getting ready to do it in the name of Jesus. Hear, hear, hear me as a prophet of the Lord. Look at me real good. Hear me good. Hear me good. And, and for seven folk that'll help her praise God, it'll happen to you next. God said, I'm getting ready to pay all your bills. All your bills. All, all your bills. All, all your bills. All all your bills, all your bills, all all your bills, all all your bills, all all your bills, all your bills, all your bills. I just heard the Holy He said, "I'm getting ready to take care of you, my God, my God. I'm getting ready to provide for you like you've never seen me provide before. I'm getting ready to do it." He says, "And I'm doing it because your heart is right." Woo! My God, my. God. God, my God, I'm, I'm getting ready to do it. I'm, what, he's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Woo-wee. Mm. Oh, oh, my God. I'm telling you, th this ain't about no money. No, you just saying, God, I just want to know you in a very real way. And you just been asking God for wisdom and clarity. And God said, since you sought me for wisdom, I'm going to do just what I did for Solomon. I'm going to give you even what you didn't even ask for. Woo! Huh. Well, 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 I'm, I, well, well. Look at somebody and tell them the next miracle, the next blessing is going to be the one you didn't even ask for. First Corinthians, First Corinthians. I, 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 I want you to see here. I, I want you to see here. I, I want you to see here. I want you to see here. You, you know, ooh, we. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say it, Sister Nikki, because the Lord woke me up the other day, and I'm going to read this text. I shared it with my wife. I, I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm a holiness preacher, but I really believe you can't live holy and not prosper. According to Psalms number one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is that man. So, so you can't live right, my God, and, not, and God not make you rich. See, some folk, you're seeking after riches and forgetting righteous. I ain't getting no help right there. See, you can be rich and go to hell, but you can't be right. I ain't getting no help. So I don't come to preach you happy. I come to preach you holy. Oh, my God. Look at somebody tell them, God's going to bless you because you love him. God's going to bless you. Uh-huh. He's going to bless you because he loves you. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke that spirit of fear. I rebuke that spirit of fear. I rebuke that spirit of fear. I'm going to say this. Y'all get ready because I'm telling you right now, I'm going to dance for about two minutes on this one here. That's 120 seconds already. And then I'm going to read my text, and we're going to see what God says next, David Brownlee. I, I woke up, and, and, and this thing shook me, Dr. Howard. It shook me. Now, hear me. I'm not this prosperity preacher. You hear me? But I really believe, without a doubt, you can't live holy and not prosper. And I, I don't, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bro, Carl, will you come do me a favor, please? 
My God, my God, because you one of the ones. Do me a favor. You ain't got, matter of fact, you come this way, grab your wife by the hand, and y'all just take a walk around this place. Y'all just take a walk around this place. Now, I'm going to prophesy this thing, and some other folk going to grab hold to it and start walking with her. But the other night, the Lord woke me up and says, get ready because I'm getting ready to drop $800 million in this house. I said, 800, look at somebody telling me, I don't care if we all got to share it. God said, I'm getting ready to drop $800 million in this house. That's what the Lord said. Now, I'm telling you, if the same God can tell Abraham that I'm getting ready to bless your seed and your seed and your seed, you mean to tell me that, Lord, look at somebody and tell them, I believe God. I'm to, I had to have you to walk on this one because I don't want you to run too fast. 800 million. I'm telling you, look at me real good. God is getting ready to drop 800 million dollars. Some of y'all looking like you scared. That's because you're just trying to get through February and March. But God is not concerned about prosperity. He's a concern about posterity. He's trying to bless your children and your children's children's children. I'm sorry, Joe, I need somebody to take another walk for me. Lean over and tell somebody, I'm so glad I was in the house this morning. I'm so glad I was in the house this morning. I may have to take a page out of Dr. Hub's book and preach with my shoes off because the ground you standing on is holy ground. Woo! See, it, the problem is not that you think too big and miss. Sometimes you thinking too small and hidden. Woo! Woo! Look at somebody and tell them that's called a miracle for us all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo. See, you always thinking about you, your four, and no more with your nasty, stingy self. But when God said, I'm getting ready to bless all his people. Woo. Would you just run to somebody and tell them, I'm so glad I was in the house this morning. I'm so glad I tuned in this morning. I'm so glad. Do you know how much ministry you can get done? We ain't dancing about the money. We dancing about the favor of God. Somebody open your mouth and give him glory. It's happening now. And all of y'all that don't believe it, Just like the prophet told the man who's, who the king leaned on. Yeah. Just because you don't believe it, you will see it. You're just not going to be able to partake of it. Woo. See, sometimes we're looking for God to bless us as individuals. Look at somebody and tell them, but God's going to bless his house. And that's why you got to make sure you stay in his house. Just grab your neighbor by the hand real quick and I promise I'm going to read the text and tell him whatever you do, stay in the house. Turn me up, turn me up. Whatever you do, stay in the house. I'm going to take it a step further. Look at somebody and tell them, I've been hurt, but I'm still in the house. 
I've been disappointed, but I'm still in the house. I even thought about leaving, but I'm still in the house. Y'all not saying nothing to me? Woo. I've been offended, but I'm still in the house. Woo. And all the enemy has been trying to do is pull you outside the house. Now listen, listen, I, I got to move on. I got to move on. First, first Corinthians chapter number one. Now I want you to get ready because evangelism is getting ready to hit this house. Hit this region. Hit this city like you've never seen before. Black, white, Hispanic, Gay, straight, getting ready to hit this house. Hear me? Hear me? Anytime God wants to add increase, he'll, he'll upset your culture. Get ready to hit this house. And stop asking God to bless your house when you don't want God to bless his house. Stop putting your house before his house. That's in the book of Haggai. Look at somebody and tell them, I want to see God's house blessed. Can I take it a step further? Can I take it a step further? Watch this here. And I'm going to see if you really can understand this. Watch this here. You ought to ask God to bless your leader's house. So the blessings will run on this house and then run on you. I ain't getting no help there. You sitting there saying, give me by, but well, in the book of first, in the book of Esther, he says, oh, king, if word get out that this done took place in the castle, it's going to affect the kingdom. So you ought to be praying, God, bless my bishop's house. Bless my pastor's house. Woo, me. Lord, Lord, bless their children. Let me tell you right now, you're one of the biggest dummies in the world if you think you can curse the head and the body not be affected. Woo, that's in Isaiah 1. Good God Almighty. Watch, watch, watch. Evangelism is getting ready to hit like you've never seen before. Evangelism is getting ready to hit like you've never seen before. Evangelism is getting ready to hit like you've never seen before. God's getting ready to use you to narrow. He's getting ready to use you. And the reason why he's going to use you, watch this here, is because you can be touched. Now, when I say that, the Bible says we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. In other words, God will allow you to go through things so that you can help other people get through what God allowed you to go through. The worst preacher in the world is somebody who ain't never been through nothing. Because he has no sensitivity for what the people are going through. And that's why sometimes God will have the preacher have one foot on the problem and another foot on the solution. Uh -huh. That's why he'll have you happy and hurting at the same time. So that you don't get so full of yourself. Yeah, but after all you've been through, God says, I'm getting ready to use you like I've never used you before. And even now, good God, I got to read this text here. Hear me, God. Even now, those rough edges, God says, I'm allowing the anointing to smooth them out. The Bible says that David took five smooth stones from the brook. The stones became jagged because they fell off the side of the mountain. They had fallen into some things and got nicked up and roughed up. But when they landed in the brook, <laughs> whoo, look at somebody and tell them, when you landed in the brook, <laughs> it was all a part of God's plan to smooth you out. And you're not going to be like Naomi. No, no, you're not going to be bitter. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. And that's the problem with some folk. They didn't get better. They got bitter. And that's why God can't use you because you're so bitter. But I hear it in the Holy Ghost. God's getting ready to deliver you from that bitterness and bring you to a place of betterness. I ain't getting no help right here. But God's getting ready to use you because you refused to stay bitter and allowed it to make you better. And the wonderful thing about it, my God, Lord have mercy. But I need somebody to run for her after I say this here. The wonderful thing about it is, is that you don't even look like what you've been through. Ooh. 
I said I need somebody to run for home. You don't even look like what you've been through. Would you look at somebody and tell them I don't even look like what I'm going through now. See me smiling, dancing, and shouting, baby. It don't mean that it's all together. Lord have mercy. But in the words of J.J. Harrison, there shall be joy after this. Would you just nudge somebody and tell them, I can't tell you everything. But what I can tell you is I don't look like what I've been through. I've been through the fire and I've been through the flood. I've been through some hard stuff. But God brought me out and I don't look like what I've been through. Somebody open your mouth and give him glory, glory, glory. He just setting you up to use you. He's setting you up to use you. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. I'm First Corinthians. Now, I, I, I love the writings of Paul. I, I love the writings of Paul. I, I, I love the writings of Paul. I, I love the writings of Paul. All right. Yeah, Lord. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. just, just look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor to whom much is given much is required now I'm, I'm talking to three of y'all but I, I, I gotta use some wisdom on this one here because I know how folk get you're asking God for more but you're not willing to give him more now, I ain't talking about your money we'll get to that in a minute I'm talking about your life your commitment you cannot serve God on a part time basis Woo. And you're believing God for so much more. God, I want more. God says, if you want more, give me more. God says, I don't want some of you. I want all of you. <laughs> all of you. Hear me good now. Hear me good now. The Holy Ghost. I hear it in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is getting ready to rest in your vehicle. So when you get in your car, you're going to start looking around like somebody else is in here. Yes, it is. It's called the Holy Ghost. And even as you driving down the street, you're going to feel the hand of God. Don't you let go of the wheel, but don't you close your eyes. You're going to feel the presence of God. I feel like some of y'all are already there. You find yourself crying when ain't nothing wrong, laughing, and when ain't nothing funny. Look at somebody and tell them, it's just God in my car. From the crown of your head even down to the sole of your feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God said, I want more of you. 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 I want more. I want more time in prayer. Yeah. Uh-huh. I want more time. I want more time. On that, God says he wants more of you. He wants more. He wants more. He wants more. Ty, God says he wants more of you. He wants more. He says, for what I'm getting ready to do for you, a little bit won't do. I want more. I want more. Minister Latrice, get ready because God says, I want the more. I want the more. I want the more. I want the more. Joe, God says, I want more of you. I want more of you. I want more of you. Anthony, God says, I want more. 
I want more of you. Just because I'm calling their name don't mean I'm exempting you. He says, I want more, preacher. God says, I want more of you. I want more. I want more time with you. I want more prayer with you. I want more worship out of you. I want more. Elder God says, I want more. He says, why? Because to whom much is given, much is required. And if God is saying, I want more of you, that's because he's getting ready to give you more. Elder God wants more. 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 First, he wants more. He wants more. DJ Brownlee, God says, I want more. I want more. I can't take you to dizzy heights if you're not willing to give me more. More. I want more. I want more. I want more. Some of us serve God based off of convenience. God says, I'm not that God. I want more. I want more. I want more. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Help me good. The harvest is here. The harvest is here. First Corinthians. And I'm done. First Corinthians. My time is, is, is up, but that's all right. I want more. First Corinthians, uh, uh, verse number 17. First Corinthians, chapter number one. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. But to preach the gospel. Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Sister Rosetta, is that her name? She ushers. How is she? Somebody ought to know. She just dropped in my spirit. How is she? How is she? Somebody, I know all these folk in here don't nobody know how our sister doing. How is she? That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Somebody found out you don't have to do it right this second. But I stand in proxy. I stand in the gap for God cover and strengthen her in the name of Jesus. God dropped her right in my spirit. Did I call her name right? Uh-huh. God cover and keep her. God cover and keep her. I know she's an usher. You all got her information. Reach out to her immediately after service and tell her just want to make sure you're doing all right and see how you're doing. We love you. We miss you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All, all right. Back to verse number 17. Woo! For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of non effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Y'all be seated for a few minutes. We shall rise again. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolish. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Uh, I find it very interesting, give me your attention. I find it very interesting that people today are more moved by the blessings and benefits of God and less concerned about the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I think it's a problem that people get excited, they run, they dance, they jump. So it's the hope about the blessings of God, new house, new car, new promotion, but when we start talking about the blood, it gets real quiet. Uh, I think I'm bothered that some of y'all not bothered. People are embracing Reverend, hey, my God, I feel you. People are embracing, my sister, a crossless Christ. They, they, they are embracing a Christ uh, without any cross. Uh, 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 the preaching of a crossless Christ produces contaminated and dysfunctional Christians. People seem to have no knowledge of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, churches and even whole denominations, mother, are moving away from the message of salvation through the blood of Jesus and are moving towards a message of salvation through social involvement. And good works. You can be the goodest person all you want. I said goodest. You can be the goodest person all you want, but being good won't get you into glory. Only what you do for Christ will last. The bloody message of the cross is rapidly becoming replaced by a bloodless presentation that lacks the preaching, the purpose, and the power of the cross. 
of which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died upon for you and I. Don't ever get so to the point that you embrace God's blessings that you forget about the blood. For the Bible tells us that had it not been for the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sins. In our text, and I'm done, the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, reminding them that he had been called for one purpose, and that purpose was to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is not your preacher's purpose to preach you happy, but to preach you holy. And oftentimes when the preacher have to preach you holy, it's going to hurt. I ain't getting no help right there. I'm not sitting here to make you feel good. It's, it's going to hurt. And, and you have to understand that, guess what? Uh, your salvation cost. It cost. Look at somebody tell them it cost. It cost. It cost. You do realize that you owe the debt that you could not pay. And that he paid a debt that he did not owe. The Bible tells us, I feel you, I feel you. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 53, verse number 4 through 9, it explains the pain that Jesus went through. I tell you, I feel like running, I'm telling you. You know, because when I start thinking about you don't have to slay a lamb anymore. You don't have to sprinkle no more blood upon the door. Someone has taken the place of the lamb. I, I'm sorry, I get excited about that. You don't have to promise me, I ain't getting no help, a Beamer, a Benz, or a Bentley. Uh-uh. You can just begin to talk about the blood of Jesus. Oh, my, 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 my. See, look, look at somebody and tell them, I'm concerned about your Christianity if the blood don't mean nothing to you. Uh. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. We got these pseudo Christians, David, that, that, that know nothing about that. He, they hung him high and they stretched him wide. For you and I, he bled and died. But that's not how. <laughs> oh, my God. The story ends. Y'all going to sit there and look at me like that? Three days later, he rose again. Look at somebody and tell him with all power. <laughs> that's how they say it down in Virginia, power. <laughs> in his hands. Now, now watch what it says here. Isaiah 53. Please be seated, but don't sit on me. All righty. Watch what it says here in 53 and verse number 5. Surely he hath borne our grief. That, that's the pain. That's, that's the pain. Borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But, see, you missed me. That was right there. That was a good place to hit me. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are. See, that's why I, that, that's why I believe that if you can have it, God can heal it. Look at somebody telling with his stripes. Joe, would you do me a favor? Just stand up and decree and declare with his stripes. <laughs> When the doctor told us that if God don't do it by December, I decreed and declare with his stripes. Lean over and tell somebody, I am healed. I'm healed not just physically, I'm healed emotionally. With his stripes, I am healed. That, 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 that dealt with his pain. You know, his pain talked about him being scarred. He talked about him being beaten in Luke 22. How they sped upon him in Matthew 27. How they plucked the hairs of his beard in Isaiah 50 and 6. And how they mocked him in Matthew 27. And how they stripped him naked in that same chapter of Matthew, the 35th verse. And how they nailed him to the cross in John 20 and 25. That dealt with his pain. How, how in the world can you forget his pain? The suffering Savior. But watch this here. He, he did it. So he could pay for our sins. Right there in 53, verse 6 and 9, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet open. Watch this here. He not his mouth, yet he opened not his mouth. Now look at somebody and tell him that ain't nobody but God. Because you know some of us, you couldn't have did that. You can't even walk around Jericho's wall without opening your mouth. Uh -huh. No, Nobody but God. The Bible says he was taken from prison and from judgment hall to judgment hall. 
Oh, my God, he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. He, he paid the price. Look at somebody and tell him he paid the price. He, he, paid, he paid the price. He, he paid the price, Derek. Watch this here. He paid the price for our sins, according to Galatians chapter number 1 and 4, who gave himself for our sins, according to Matthew 26 and 28, that shed for many for the remission of sins. He paid the price for our sins. He paid the price for our sanctification. Am I talking to anybody that still believes in sanctification? For the Bible says that he might sanctify us and cleanse us with the washing of water by the word. Sanctification. See, I don't know about these folk claiming they say but don't believe in sanctification. Is the mic on? Can y'all hear me? I, I, I got a problem with folk talking about they're real Christians, but there is no change in their lives. I ain't getting no help. I told y'all some time back, the biggest, the biggest counterfeit that ever hit the black market was the Louis Vuitton handbag. Uh-huh. And the way you could tell the real Louis from the fake Louis is that over time, because of oxidation, the real Louis, the handle would change. And that's how you can tell real Christians from fake, funky, phony Christians. It's because if you've been saved seven and ten years and you still nasty as a junkyard dog, I ain't getting no help. Folks scared to even speak to you because we just don't know how you're going to conduct yourself. I, I got a problem with that. If you really saved, there ought to be a change in your life. I ain't getting no help. Even according to Acts chapter number 2, down about verse number 41, 42, 43. Three, it talks about when they were converted I ain't getting no help they begin to convey the news of Jesus Christ look at somebody and tell them real saved folk tell other people about a oh my god a suffering savior I tell you you're looking at me kind of strange now I got a problem with Christians that talk about oh the Lord is so good but if he's that good why you don't tell nobody about him you can tell me about them sweet honey rolls over there to hops in Virginia uh huh you can tell me I ain't getting no help about the sweet honey sauce they got over there at the barbecue shack but why you can't tell me about Jesus See, real conversion brings about a conveying of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But if you keep on reading it, y'all going to look at me like that. I'll just park here for a few minutes here. But after you start conveying it, if you're really saved, you continue with the Lord. See, I ain't getting no help. They're not going to say amen to this right here. If you hop in churches every three to five years, look at somebody and tell them something wrong. Uh -huh. You ought to be able to stick through something. My Bible tells me in Psalms number 91, they that be planted in the house of the Lord shall still bring forth fruit in their old age. Where are the mothers of the church that will sit there and say, I've been here for 30 years and I've seen them come and go, but my Bible tells me that I shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. I ain't getting no help. In other words, the wind may come, but I'm still planted. Uh -huh. The wind may blow, but I'm still. Where are them saints that will simply say, I've been walking with the Lord and I have not given up now. Y'all sitting there looking at me like that. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor when I gave God my hand, I meant Jesus all the way. Why? Because he paid the price for you and I. He died. Y'all be seated here. I want you to understand that he paid for my sanctification. But not only that, he paid for our success. According to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 57, it says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it says, Be ye steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor he paid the price. But watch what it says here, and I'm done. Watch what it says here, back at Isaiah. Not only did he pay the price, but he had a plan. This was the plan in Isaiah 53 and 10. Yet it pleased the Lord. See, when you start talking about Jesus and all that he had gone through and all that you had to go through to identify with him, it, look at somebody and tell them it pleased the Lord. It, See, 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 you cannot continue to call yourself a Christian and not identify with the cross. 
there's a problem. The reason why a lot of churches are not growing is because we're, we're preaching increase, but we're not preaching the cross. And increase is going to last for a little while. I ain't getting no help, but the cross. I guess somebody tell them the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross. See, 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 must Jesus bear the cross alone and let all the world go free? I got a problem with saints that don't identify with the cross. Would you look at somebody and tell them, don't forget the cross? You cannot follow Christ fully without taking up the cross. I'm coming on in. Mark 8 and 34 says, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and what? Follow me. Look at somebody and tell him, you got to follow God. But the only way to follow God is through the cross. Slip your hands up. Speak softly. This is the cost of following him. It's the cross. Taking up your cross is a matter of decision. And I think it's pretty sad, sis, that oft times people that you interview and you ask them, tell me about your Christian experience. Tell me, when did you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, mm, uh, uh. Where's the cross? When did you actually come to the altar and say, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Created me a clean heart and renewed the right spirit. There's a cost of following Christ. He says, whosoever will come after me, come after me. That speaks of changing the direction. This is what the cross will do. It'll cause you to say, you know what? I got to make a decision and I need to change the direction of my life. You can't be saved and do any damnable thing. Act any old way. You got saved folk right in here. Ain't changed no lifestyles. And now the world is fooling them. Aunt D, they think that they can sit home and do whatever they want to do. They think that, guess what? I can serve God based off convenience and still call myself a Christian. They think I can dip and run and, and, and do this and do that. No, it's not the Bible. And can I tell you something about preaching the cross? It's not popular and it's not pretty. He says, whosoever will, that's the decision. Come after me, that's direction. Let him deny himself. You can't call yourself a Christian if you're not willing to deny yourself. I don't want the blood on my hands. Take up his cross. That speaks of death. God loves the smell of sacrifice. And follow me. That speaks of devotion. A whole lot of folk who claiming to be Christian are going to be surprised when the Lord cracks the sky. And they realize that at best they're real churchy. But Christ ain't here. When Christ is in your heart, you change your direction. You cannot be grandfathered into Christianity. My mama was saved, so it automatically make me saved. My granddaddy was a preacher. My grand-granddaddy was a bishop. That I'm, no! You have to have your own experience. This is what Thomas said. Thomas said, okay, I know y'all say that y'all saw Jesus, but I won't believe. You know, you ain't doubting Thomas, but what Thomas was really saying was, I need my own experience. I can't go off of your experience. I need my own experience. And you know what, T? A lot of folk ain't saved. Why? Because every week they hear a crossless Christ. A crossless Christ that simply says, everybody can just do whatever you want to do. 
and still call yourself his. You can't do what you want to do. And then the minute you start conveying this to the people, here come flesh offense. Offense, I don't like it. And everybody has this proclivity to feel sorry for the victim. But if you know without a doubt that this is the clarion call, when we hit the communities, when we go out in the street, we got to tell people that he was hung up for our hanging. We got to tell people that on Friday they nailed him to a cross. On Friday, they put him in a borrowed tomb on Friday. But early Sunday morning, nobody running, nobody jumping, nobody excited. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. You know why? Because we've been so contaminated with our personal stuff. See, when, when you understand the cross, you become like Joseph. Joseph said, I can't do this thing and, 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 and disrespect my master. I, God, God, I can't do this thing and disrespect God. No, there has to be a standard. And we come month after month and we take this table. And you know what the Bible says? For this cause, many are sick and do sleep because we're taking what's holy. And we're doing it out of ritual and routine. Not discerning the Lord's body. Oh, you know how big of a disservice I would do if I was to grab back and grab my ear and modulate and hoop and holler and just go all up and down and then ask you all to give a good offering but not tell you the truth. And then you know why? Watch this here. We can't win others because many of us have not been one ourselves. This is what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. He says, I'm afraid, that last few verses, that when I come to see you, some of y'all have not left your lust. You have not come out of the stuff that you were in. You still do things that are not of God. And I hear God saying, tell the people today, don't take communion not discerning my body, holding grudges, upset and angry. Release it now. Forgive yourself. Slip those hands up. We're done. Oh, we stay in church too long, but you go to the movies for three hours. He reading too many scriptures. But you stay on Instagram and Facebook. Where is Christ in our hearts? How is it that you go and sit up in a house of bun a, a, a bunch of whole bunch of unsafe folk and feel comfortable sitting right there? It's because you're not winning them, they are winning you. And they laugh at your Christianity. When you leave and you go, all right, I'm headed to church, I'm a Christian, they go, <clears throat> right. Ahmad Gandhi said, I almost became a Christian until I met one. Do you not understand that when you go out and tell the world, I'm saved, Christ came into my heart, now they, they started looking at you. Why? Because we are all living epistles read by men. You might be the only presentation of Christ that some folk ever see. You know some Brother Frank, some folk don't even believe Jesus is coming back. And you think that giving a sacrificial offering and, and giving your tithe is enough? No, he wants your heart. Psalms 51 says, guess what? A contrite heart? Oh no, he will not despise. That's what I want. But the last time, you just sat up there and said, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. God, forgive me. I do things I shouldn't do. I say things I shouldn't say. God, forgive me. Not this pseudo stuff. This is why the message of grace has become so contaminated. Because now it has people think that you can do anything, and I'm still good. 
Everybody standing. I serve my bishop. That don't make you saved. I come to church every Sunday morning. That don't make you saved. Some folk, if you ask them right now, Aunt Dean, tell us. When, when was it that the Lord came into your heart and changed your life? Mm, uh, mm, uh, I got to get back with you. Mm, mm, no, you ought to know. You, you ought to know. We become so guilty of preaching people happy. And you know why sometimes someone preaches to people happy? Because they got to make budget. If I preach this kind of gospel, folk ain't going to want to give. Church going to go. Now, no, the devil is a liar. If you don't like this type of preaching, keep your money. Your money perish with you. It's the book of Acts. Until now, when you give them the gospel, and then we take the, you know who God's going to charge first. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Lift those hands halfway to our God. We don't want to take the Lord's Supper for the last time in this facility and your heart not be right. We don't want to take the Lord's Supper not discerning his body. How is it that you be a Christian and you become so offended when he says in offense, watch this here, or in malice, be like children. Hurry up and get rid of it and get yourself back in line. Really? How can you be a Christian and don't come to God's house but want God to be at your house? That make as much sense if you saying you work somewhere, but you never show up. You know I work over there. What's your hours? Mm. Well, you know I work over there. When you go? Mm. You know I work over there. Mm. That's like having a bank account, and you never make any uh, deposits. But every week you're standing there trying to make a withdrawal. You know how stupid you look? Oh, don't say that, Bishop. Somebody going to get offended. You know how crazy you look? Walking in the bank, have no account. Yeah, I'm, I'm here to make a withdrawal. Well, we can't find your information. Some of us, we come, we dance, and all that is well and good. And we believe in God for greater. We believe in God for greater. We believe in God for greater. But God says, who do you think I am? That you can just treat me like some part-time lover? God is not first in many of our hearts. He's not first in many of our hearts. Watch this. How can you say you follow God but then you don't follow his representation that he put in front of you. The Bible says, Joe, that whenever they went out to battle, they had the Ark of the Covenant. He says, when you see the Ark, they followed after the Ark. They went after the Ark. As long as the Ark, where, where, as long as they were where the Ark was, Asia, they were good. All right, the Ark is here. This is where we're going. The Ark, the Ark. Then God says in Jeremiah 3.15, I've taken the Ark and given you a pastor after my own heart. So now the pastor says, all right, come go this way. And you go, mm-mm, I'm going the other way. Pastor says, meet me back here at 5 o'clock. No, you're going another way. If any man will follow me, will come after me, let him first deny himself. How much of a Christian are you? You never come to Wednesday night Bible study. How much do you love God? As much as you love his word. Oh, I know you don't like this. Some of us haven't picked our Bibles up since last week. And thank God for the screen. Some of these millennials have never seen a paperback Bible. What is that? 
I love God and I'm leading my family. How are you leading your family if you can't follow God? I'm being honest with you. Wednesday night Bible study, mostly women in the house. Where are the men? The women dancing and believing God to provide for their house and God simply says, I'm a God of order. I'm a God of order. I'm a God of order. Your husband can't never come to church, but I bet he'd be there to watch that Super Bowl. You know why? That's his God. That's his God. Bishop, don't say that. The people won't like it. I'm like the Apostle Paul. I have not been, you know, sent here to preach to you any other thing except the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you keep going to a doctor that kept telling you what you wanted to hear? Your blood pressure high, you're getting dizzy, you feel like you're about to fall out, your sight getting dim, he told me something, you're doing good, pay the nurse on the way out. After a while, you're going to have to go to a doctor, he's going to tell you, listen, you better get your blood pressure under control, you better stop eating all them pork rinds, you better start exercising, drink plenty of water every day. You're going to say, thank you for telling me the truth. The folk don't like the truth. Oh, we're going to take the Lord's Supper, but it's going to be different today. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus. Not another day that we take you for granted. Not another day that we pull on your blessings and forsake your blood. Not another day that, God, we ask you for your harvest of blessings but can't consistently come to your house. Not another day, God, because if so, all we're going to do is produce other fake, funny Christians. God, do something in us. Do something in us me spirit of the living God do something in me as your leader as the set gift here to lead your people God stir up a gift in me God in the name of Jesus God forgive me forgive us oh God come on pray with me forgive us oh God for not standing flat-footed and firm, oh God. Forgive us for living a life of compromise. Forgive us for being one way in public but another way in private. Forgive us and wash us clean, God. God, we get excited about the good news, but God, we got to get excited about the gospel. Wash us. God, I'm sorry. My commitment needs to be better. I'm sorry. My commitment needs to be better. Move this table over there, please. The altar is open. My commitment needs to be better. Move it this way. That's fine. Just move it right this way. My commitment needs to be better. My commitment needs to be better. This altar is open right now. That's fine. My commitment needs to be better. I need to do better. God, I'm not honoring you the way I should with my life. God, I do things and people are watching me. This, this altar is open. It's open for everybody. It's open for everybody, not just led to even leaders. You ain't fooling nobody. God, I'm sorry. God, I need you to more, God. I need you to more. This level of Christianity is not right. Calling myself a Christian, I need to do better, God. I gossip too much. I lie at times. I say things I shouldn't say. God, I keep putting everything ahead of you. 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 Ahead of you. But today it ends. You come to this altar, come with a yes, Lord, on your lips. Come telling him yes, yes, 
yes, yes. Yes, come telling him yes. It's between you and God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I keep letting the trials of life push and pull me, God. I need to get back to where you want me to be, God. God, I need you right now in the name of Jesus. I used to feel your presence when I woke up in the morning. I used to feel your presence when I went to bed at night. I used to call on you and I knew you were there, God. But somewhere... I've gotten away from the blood. Oh my God. And God, I'm asking you right now, God. Come on, slip those hands up, God. I'm asking you right now, God, to come back into my heart. Renew me, oh God. Strengthen me, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I'm easily offended. I don't like things, God. Forgive me, oh God. I haven't spoken in tongues in years, oh God. Stir up the gift in me right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I can't just come to this altar and go back the same way. I need to feel your presence. I need to know that you're there, God. I need to know that you're there, God. I need to know that you are there. Come on, open your mouth and just tell them, yes, 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 yes. Come on, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. God, use me. That desire that I had in my heart for you, God. That yearning, Father, even as a child, oh God, use me, oh God. Oh God, get me out of the place where I'm just worried about my necessities, oh God, until I just want more of you, God. More of you, God. More of you, God. Yes. Come on, open your mouth and tell him yes, yes, yes. Come on, open your mouth and tell him yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Open your mouth and just tell him yes. Yes, God. Yes to your will, God. Yes to your way, God. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes. Woo! Yes, yes. Come on. Tell him yes, yes, yes. Oh my yes. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's all right. Let the tears flow. Yes, God. I've been called into the ministry, God, but I don't have that yearning anymore, God. You want to use me, God, but I don't have that desire anymore, God. You want to use me, God, but I don't have that in me anymore, God. Yes. Yes, 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 God, yes. God, you're desiring more of me, God, but I just got to just give you a total yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's right. That's right. Go forth in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Go forth. Go forth. In the name of Jesus. Go forth in the name of Jesus, God. Go forth in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There it is. There it is. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Let him have it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The power of God be upon you. In the name of Jesus. The anointing of God be upon you. In the name of Jesus. The glory of God be upon you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, mama, mama, di ando, roba, shatamaha. Yes, Lord. 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 God. God, not my will, but your will be done, God. Use me, oh God. Use me, oh God. For your glory, God. Use me, oh God. Stir me, God. Moan me, God. Shake me, God. All for your glory, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Yes, God. Come, come. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, yes. 
yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, God. God, I lift your name high, God. God, use me, God. You can have me, God. God, all of me, all of me, God. None of me, but all of you, God. God, I give all of me to you, God. Oh, ba 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 say it from my heart. Oh, God, do it for your glory. Do it for your glory. Do it for your glory. Do it for your glory, God. Do it for your glory. Do it for your glory, God. Do it for your glory. Do it for your glory, God. 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 In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, 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 yes. God, I'm going after you, God, like I've never gone after you before. Turn in me, oh God, that will, God, break my will, God. I want your will, God. Yes! 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 Your will be done in my life, God. Your will be done in my life. Quickly move, quickly. Quickly, quickly, yes. Yes. Move quickly, yes. Yes. Spirit of the living God, rest on your people, God. Spirit of the living God, rest on your people, God. Yes to your will. Yes to your way, God. Yes, God. Use me, God. Use me, God, for your glory. For your glory. For your glory, quick. For your glory, quick. For your glory. For your glory. There's a yes there. Spirit of the living God, rest on us, God. Give it to him, give it to him, give it to him, give it to him. Give it to him, give it to him, give it to him. Release it to him, yes, God. Release it to him, yes, God. Release it to him, yes, Lord. Yes! Yes, God, yes, Lord. Yes, God, yes, Lord. Yes, God, yes, yes, yes. Hey. Even my house, God. Save my family, Lord. Save my family, Lord. Save my family, Lord. Yes! Woo! Restore me, Lord. 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 There it is, 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 release it to him. There it is, there it is. That's what he wants. Get the baby, get the baby. Yes, God, that's right. That's what he wants, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. Oh. Throw your arms around somebody and tell them just give it to them. Hug them real good. Tell them just give it to them. He wants all of you. He wants all of you. He wants all of you. 